What I've noticed with time, why, with my personal growth, also following my student, is that uh, Nietzsche Gong um, is not able to give us um, a full perspective on who we are, in one sense, because I come from a Buddhist background. Before embarking into this Nietzsche Gong journey, I was involved into Buddhist practices. Some of them very powerful, that transformed the way that I see myself completely. If you are watching a video, video like this, if you are, uh, we are uh, looking for a spiritual meaning in life, which might be caused by different purposes, by the fact of finding deeper meaning, by the fact that we don't like the world, that we want to improve ourselves, we have to make the right question with ourselves. And unfortunately, we try methods, uh, but we don't have the correct vision of who we are. That's why, for instance, in the Buddhist tradition that I was following, it was said that the methods alone, they are unproductive. They don't uh, really get to the right result. To some extent, Nei Gong, Qigong practices, yoga practices can lead to this full understanding of who we are. But it is more important to have also a vision. That's why in the Buddhist tradition, it was said that uh, the realization of human being needs to be supported by three main elements. The correct vision, which is called also wisdom, by the, some methods, some kind of practices that we do, and the direct experience of another way that the human being operates. Let's say like in a new operating system. We have Mac OS and we have Windows. The Mac OS is a bit more efficient. In one sense, we can see it that way. When we start our spiritual journey, we idealize and build um, an imaginary world and imaginary ideas about spiritual, spiritual realization, depicting this phenomenon as something uh, incredible, something um, like some lights and some colors should appear in our life when we come to this conclusion. But in reality, it's not like that. It's just a change of vision and as I said, the operating system that rules ourselves. When we approach um, spirituality, we could do it uh, in different ways, and also these different ways could um, um, match certain visions of life. One is the religious one, where we believe that there is a God entity creating all this world, and we are just poor guys here uh, suffering with no possibility of evolving, and we, the only thing that we could do is actually praying and hoping that this uh, benevolent force can help us to develop. And to a certain extent, it can be a powerful one, it, although it is limited, because it's based on the idea that we have the original sin, like in Christianity, and there's nothing we can do about it, rather than just you know, praying and trying to uh, wait for the grace to solve our um, uncomfortable existence. The other vision is the nihilistic one, the materialistic one, which uh, thinks that everything happens just as a matter of coincidence. Uh, there is no particular meaning behind this process that we call life, and we just go through it with a little bit of a sad and cynic uh, perception of it. This conclusion doesn't really help us, and can lead us to be cold and also hopeless about our future, about our improvement in life, because it doesn't depend on us. The third option is a bit more complex to understand. It's called non-duality, non-dual. I'm sure that you have heard these terms, especially related to Advaita Vedanta and some kind of schools and philosophies that take in, into consideration ourselves as part of the whole. So the relationship between what we call life and ourselves is strictly connected. It's connected also to the possibility of improving ourselves and improving uh, our experience of life. In the Buddhist tradition to the highest, when we talk about the highest level, it is said uh, that samsara is equal to nirvana. These two terms refer uh, to two particular states, let's say. When we talk about samsara, we identify the unawakened conditions of human beings, the suffering and ever um, continuing um, process of uh, uh, suffering and uh, non knowing and living in ignorance. With Nirvana, it is uh, considered um, this blissful state and this uh, kind of uh, enlightened state of being. 
but at the highest point, the two don't really differ in each other. And I want to relate this concept also to the Qigong practice in this case, because I'm a Nei Qigong teacher. As I said at the beginning of this video, um, in the Buddhist tradition, let's say that uh, let's use it as a useful tool, not as a, a religion, a religious aspect that we have to uh, direct ourselves towards, but just rather as a, an explanation. It is said that the spiritual realization, the realization of a human being on a personal spiritual level, it is based on three factors. The correct vision or wisdom of who we are, the methods and the direct experience. The reason why I say that um, Qigong um, can be a limited tool if we want to embark into the discovery and into the realization of our full potential as human being, it's because Qigong is one, uh, represents one of these three elements. As I said, we have wisdom, methods and a direct experience of the awakened states, let's call, it, let's call it like this. And Qigong represents the method, so something that we can use um, to uh, train ourselves and by practicing to come to the direct experience of another operating system, as I described it before. I made the analogy of the macOS and Windows. The Windows is a bit glitchy, the macOS is a bit more functional in its way. So the practice of Qigong on its own is not able to 100% um, to free ourselves from our human conditionings. When we talk about awakening we are, or freedom, whatever we want to uh, call it, we are talking about a state where we are not subject anymore and slave of our human conditionings on a mental, emotional and physical level and where we uh, are able to express and experience something which is free from our personal story, so past, present and future. A state of total alertness and relaxation which is not connected and dependent on life to some extent itself, but it's rather the base of life, the base which allows us to perceive and to uh, be fully alive on this planet, on this uh, human existence. Um, Qigong, yoga, meditation practices can help us uh, to improve our psychological state, to improve our physical state, to improve our emotional state, definitely. But it is very important if our goal is actually uh, the spiritual growth, to have a vision, so to have an explanation, even intellectual, about the problem, the nature of our self. In the Buddhist tradition, one of the amazing tools that I found on my way was the will of life, the explanation of Buddha uh, about the samsara, the conditioned existence, and how uh, this existence perpetuates itself and continues all the time. That's why I've tried to share it with my students on a Patreon page where I recorded a video and did live meetings to introduce this concept. Because having a correct vision of how our operating system is working and what life is about can help us eventually to um, have a better experience and better understanding, which together paid with the practice such as Nei Qigong, very powerful practice, can eventually lead us to the freedom state that we all aim for, the liberation from the duality of life, uh, from uh, the suffering and the joy, to come down to a state of contentment and presence which is completely out of time. If you're interested in exploring this kind of concept in a more deep way, there is a Patreon page you can find on the links below where you can register for very little donation and access this monthly uh, recording that were made in 2022, where you can watch and dive deeper and deeper into the nature of this text, which is just a simple and powerful explanation of what it's called samsara, the Buddha uh, painting of the Wheel of Life, which can help us develop a better view of ourselves. The reason why I'm shooting this video is uh, to warn, so to speak, all the uh, Qigong practitioners and Nei Qigong practitioners as, as well um, from the belief um, of believing actually that the only pa the path is able to free ourselves in itself. It's not 100% true. There could be some chances that we might 
um, realize and discover a state within ourselves different from our normal operating system. Again, the Windows operating system. But it's not 100% sure because um, the, this experience of uh, state of the flow, of being free, of uh, uh, being free from time and space, um, is not 100% ensured by the practice. If it happens, sometimes it happens for a very short time and sometimes we don't even understand what it is. So it's very difficult to actually to uh, have a compass to see where we're going and um, investigating deeper who we are. That's why I really encourage everybody uh, to explore. It doesn't have to be this text. This text is just a tool. It doesn't have to be a Buddhist text or whatever it is. Explore the non-dual teachings. I will start to share uh, some of these teachings on the channels and hopefully they can be beneficial to many uh, human beings so that we could uh, investigate and explore together a state of higher freedom. If you're interested in that, please comment in this video below and let me know what you think and I will try to go deeper and deeper into this text in a very simple way, breaking down all the bits. If you are already interested in going deeper into it, you want to have a full recording of this uh, material, again, with my explanation. You can go on the Patreon page and subscribe for a very little donation monthly and access this video, they are all there, so that you don't need to wait and start your journey with yourself. If you're interested into this topic, uh, please subscribe to the channel to help to uh, grow the channel so that other people could benefit uh, from these tools. These are not the uh, magic tools in life and the only ones. These are just powerful tools that were very helpful in my life. And I hope that they can transform the way that you live and see yourself so that you can have a better human experience.